And we are kicking off today with CM Punk, who for the past year or so has been the center of controversy within AEW. After what transpired it all out, many fans thought they'd seen the last of Punk, who has been given a second chance, but there may be more trouble brewing with the real AEW World Champion. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select reports that Ryan Nemeth was brought in for the latest taping of AEW Collision, only to be told by a coach that he was no longer needed. AEW even booked a flight for Nemeth to return home as soon as he arrived at the arena, but what does all this have to do with the best in the world? Well, Nemeth has been one of the more vocal critics of Punk in AEW, and following the latter's return to TV in June, Nemeth tweeted that Punk was literally the softest man alive. This was because Punk's first promo back saw him take no responsibility for what he did it all out, and it was reported at the time that Punk took great exception to Nemeth's tweet. We don't know what was said between the two backstage at the time, but we know things did not get physical, though Nemeth would deactivate his Twitter shortly after the matter. Many suspect that Nemeth being pulled from Collision was a punk call, and it isn't the only controversy stemming from this week's show. After Collision, Punk mocked Hangman Adam Page, somebody else the Chicago Made star has issues with, saying that Page is unable to sell merchandise or pop a rating. Fightful's report added that the promo following Collision wasn't scripted or planned, and that a storyline with Page isn't in the works, leaving many wondering why Punk said what he said. On the surface, it appears CM Punk once again went into business for himself, and we'll have to see if Tony Khan has any response after this latest outburst from the veteran. But what do you think of all this? Is Punk going too far again, and how would you deal with him? Let us know down in the comments. Punk had plenty to say about Hangman Adam Page after this week's collision went off the air, and it turns out that Page was supposed to have something to say himself during the broadcast. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer reports that Page was supposed to film a pre-tape backstage interview at Collision, which would have aired during an upcoming episode of Dynamite. When he arrived at the event, though, he was told that they would have to film somewhere other than the Greensboro Coliseum, and that he would not be used on screen in any capacity. Page was not given a reason as to why this change of plans had occurred, but like with Nemeth, many suspect that CM Punk may have whispered in Tony Khan's ear and made the change happen. It's no secret that Punk has had issues with Page, who has respectfully kept silent over whatever backstage issues they have, a silence that has earned him praise backstage for his professionalism. The Elite have had little to no impact on AEW Collision thanks to Punk being on the show, and it seems that the real world champion continues to flex his influence backstage each Saturday night. We've got news from AAA now, as last weekend was the promotion's Triple Mania 31 Mexico City event, which saw El Hijo del Vikingo retain his Mega Championship. Despite the odds being against him, Vikingo retained against Mike Bailey, Daga, and Jack Cartwheel, but things took a shocking turn after the match. In a video that went viral on social media, Vikingo collapsed backstage after the match in a legitimate medical issue, one that resulted in him being stretchered away and taken in an ambulance. In an update, it was stated that this was not a work and that Vikingo was feeling unwell before the match, but chose to carry on. Sources confirmed to PW Insider that the AAA Mega Champion is said to be feeling better now and is not expected to miss any upcoming dates, and his collapse is being chalked up to being dehydrated. Vikingo is expected to be back in the ring soon enough, but this situation could have been much worse, and we'll make sure to keep following his situation for further updates. Earlier this month, it was reported that WWE was bringing in Nick Aldis as a potential producer and have had their eye on the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion for quite some time. Another name WWE has been eyeing up as a producer is Robert Roode, and his neck issues have left his in-ring future in question, and both men learned plenty during the most recent SmackDown. Fightful Select reports that Aldis shadowed fellow Impact alum Petey Williams, who was producing the match between AJ Styles and Karrion Cross, which the phenomenal one would go on to win. As for Rude, he got the chance to work with Jamie Noble, who produced the US title match, which saw Rey Mysterio capture the gold from Austin Theory. Aldis and Rude were also backstage at last week's Raw, but it remains unclear whether the British star is under contract with WWE, or if the company has any plans to use him as an in-ring talent as well. Both Rude and Aldis are veterans and would provide plenty of experience as producers, and time will tell what the future has for the pair of former TNA World Champions. 
When you attend a WWE event, you have the chance to purchase merchandise of your favorite superstars, which are often an indication as to who the most popular wrestlers on the roster are. Even today, fans can expect to see an Austin 316 shirt or NWO tee in the crowd at events, and which stars are leading the way right now. Fightful Select reports that L.A. Knight is proving to be a top merchandise draw, and his sales figures are said to be right up there with Cody Rhodes, despite the latter having much more merchandise. Seth Rollins and Rhea Ripley are consistent names when it comes to the top merchandise sellers, but one name you may be surprised to learn has faltered is The Bloodline. The group was once consistently the top merchandise seller in WWE, but the reason for the change is that back then, WWE would include Roman Reigns merch, Sami Zayn merch, and The Usos merch, all as counting as Bloodline merch. With Zayn and The Usos no longer with the group, the official statistics for how much Bloodline merch WWE is selling has dropped, though Reigns and Solo Sokoa still move a ton of merchandise. The fact that L.A. Knight is up there with Cody Rhodes is a huge positive sign for his future, and with repeated complaints that there's not enough L.A. Knight options, expect that to change soon enough. It was in mid-2022 that Finn Balor became a member of the Judgment Day, but despite the group being a constant on WWE TV, Balor hasn't been getting wins when it matters most. Balor lost to Edge at WrestleMania, and lost to Seth Rollins at both Money in the Bank and SummerSlam. And could this mark the end of Balor's time with WWE? Speaking on his podcast, Kurt Angle shared his take that WWE needs to do something notable with Balor, such as a world title run, or could risk pushing Finn out of the company when his contract expires. Angle even went on to say that he wouldn't blame Finn if he chose to leave WWE, given that he's usually on the losing end of high-profile matches and has seemingly become a background character to Dominic and Rhea Ripley. Balor is the only Judgment Day member without either a title or a Money in the Bank briefcase right now, and do you think he should consider leaving WWE? Let us know in the comments. And we're ending today with Ariana Grace as the NXT superstar hasn't been seen in the ring for some time after suffering a torn ACL late last year. Grace hasn't been referenced on TV, but recently disclosed that she has been able to start taking bumps again, indicating that a return to the ring could be soon, but before that happens, she'll be competing in the Miss Universe Canada pageant. On threads, Grace said that being able to compete as a WWE superstar and in the pageant is a dream come true, and she'll be going up against 61 other finalists later this week. Grace is the daughter of Santino Marella, who these days works as an authority figure for Impact Wrestling. And when she is able to return to the ring and return to NXT programming, Ariana Grace may do so as Miss Universe Canada. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.